Hello, I'm Scott Manley, and today I'm here with Martin... And I'm gonna miss... can't pronounce your name. Martin <coughs> Melichurik. <laughs> Melichurik. Martin Melichurik. Martin Melichurik. <laughs> and you are the product... Uh, the director for uh, Take On Mars, right? The, the project lead, yeah. The project lead, which means... Um, what do you handle then, specifically? Well, uh, basically I... I th thought up the project. Uh, it actually started off as a modification for Carrier Command, a uh, Gaia mission, one of our previous games. And uh, basically, once it uh, was in a certain prototype stage, we decided to make a whole game out of it. So that's basically uh, what I was doing. So why, why did you decide to go with Mars? I mean, what what made you that give you this idea that people would want to drive rovers around Mars? Given that you're known for Carrier Command and Arma. Uh, well, uh, actually, Mars I've really loved since like Sojourner landed on uh, on Mars along with his Pathfinder lander uh, back in '97, uh, I believe it was. Yeah. Uh, so I remember watching it from from that time, um, and then when uh, actually Opportunity drove by Victoria Crater in 2004, that was actually where my uh, when it really inspired me to try and make something because I was I was modding way before I actually um, uh, even started in the game business. So uh, uh, so. Yeah, so I actually made a, a little modification for Doom 3 back in the day, um, which was Victoria Crater, um, but I've still got that somewhere in my hard drive, I guess. <laughs> uh, but never really completed that because uh, I didn't have time. <laughs> so to get the opportunity to do it now as a proper game has been just absolutely brilliant. Uh, so will we be expecting zombies on Mars, given you made a Doom 3 mod on Mars? <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, you know, I, I, I cannot say that the community will not make Mars Z or something like that. Uh, but I personally really love my science, so uh, that's great. So, won't be coming from me, probably. <laughs> yeah, I did think that it was kind of amusing. The very first question I saw in the forums was, "Can I use the Mars maps with Arma?" Yeah, <laughs> that was a very good question. Um, unfortunately, that is not possible like to directly port it um, because it is actually a different engine. Um, uh, Army uses the real virtuality engine, which is, of course, developed in-house. Um, and this game runs on the Carrier Command engine, uh, also known as Enforce, which is also developed in-house, but uh, is a completely different engine. So it's uh, they're not compatible directly. However, obviously, you can you know export the satellite data, export the uh, the height data, and import it, and then essentially recreate it in Arma. So it is possible in that sense. So I'm actually curious how you you did these maps. You grabbed uh, official NASA data and a bunch of photos, and then prettified that. Or well, essentially, what uh, essentially uh, the high rise data that you can get from. Um, get from NASA is extremely detailed. It's actually got detail to about half a meter resolution. Um, so we actually took that, um, but the, pro the problem with that is you get, um, we have like each of our locations are four by four kilometers. Um, so you get a uh, wonderful stripe in the center, which is colored and the rest is black and white. So uh, <laughs> you, so using that wonderful colored stripe, the little magical tool, uh, we actually colored the rest of the terrain uh, like as realistically as possible because obviously you do have uh, colored data for a much lower resolution. Uh, so that's what we've done here. Um, so. And essentially, then, the, as, as for the height data, again, there is a certain um, you know resolution limit to that. Um, it is actually like a lot of it is generated from actually two um, uh, two images, stereo uh, stereo images of the same location. So uh, so it's not too uh, too detailed. So then you do have to kind of uh, you know fill in the details by hand. And you have artists that are doing that. Uh, well, uh, for Victoria Crater, um, the initial, uh, actually for all the locations, the initial height data actually I did, um, more or less by hand. Uh, so uh, basically I took the height data, which was extremely rough, and then had to iron it out. Um, and then I started adding rocks and all this stuff. So uh, so I was actually doing like a large part of, uh, or about a quarter of Victoria Crater. And then uh, I handed it over to the uh, other designers. Um, and uh, I was writing the, uh, the game functions essentially, yeah. So how many locations are in the file, or how many locations are there in now? I think I've got three in my version so far, but yes, yes, there are there are three if we uh, if we do not uh, include the Mars Yard, uh, which is actually a fourth location, but that's on Earth, so I right. guess that doesn't count. <laughs> um, but uh, but yes, we have Gale, we have a section from Gale Crater, uh, which is actually southeast, I believe it is, uh, from where Curiosity landed. We chose a location which is uh, would be absolutely logical to send her over there in reality because it would actually most probably smash itself on the rocks there. But um, but it is very visually pleasing. That's why we chose it. Um, so <laughs> that is a little unrealistic. However, um, you know, uh, we we are limited to four by four kilometers. Uh, of terrain size, so yeah, well, that yeah, that makes sense. I think. I mean, I actually had my when I played career mode, my second one probe crashed. Yeah, <laughs> and I, 
unfortunately at that point leaving me with no money uh, so the gameplay mechanics they're still being worked on to a certain extent the career mechanics yes of course yes yes definitely um, like <clears throat> especially with the uh, the uh, part failure um, it is actually dependent on the vehicle quality which can be adjusted in the rover lab so when you select the vehicle in the map to send there you can just press launch vehicle or you can um, actually click on vehicle details and then press modify vehicle mm -hmm. and there you can either add instruments remove instruments uh, or even modify their quality if you up in the top left there's a tab there where it's add by default I just switch that to onboard um, and this will all be part of a tutorial of course which we'll be introducing in the next week so uh, so hopefully that should help folks uh, kind of uh, gri get grips a little better yes yeah, so you can have you know high quality or you can have cheaper and spread over a wider area yes Exactly. N nice and high quality and really reliable or cheap and nasty. Are you planning including like actual testing to improve part quality? You know, being pay being able to pay for tests on the pl on planet Earth and then having a f lower chance of failure or cheaper, higher quality parts? Uh, well, uh, the, originally the concept behind it was uh, to actually have that you start off with the lowest quality um, in being that like not being that it wouldn't be actually quality, but it would be, you know, Mark one um, and that when it crash lands, you would have a data recovery tool, which you actually, um, you know, re like gain information from it, like mm. analyze it, uh, analyze the actual heat right. shield, for example, and uh, from that determine whether, whether, you know, where the crash cause was, and then, uh, you know, develop better technology, like into Mark II, for example. Right, find out who put the accelerometer in backwards and fire that staff member, right? <laughs> exactly, 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 that is... Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, right now the tech tree is very simple. It's like you go a few missions and you unlock a new tech level. Is there going to be more, uh, more branching tech there? The ability to focus more on one thing versus another, or is it going to stay that way until later? Uh, well, at the moment, we didn't exactly have a plan to change that all that much, um, simply because, obviously, you know, uh, we are a relatively small team for uh, for this project. Uh, especially a lot of the functionality, uh, sorry, a lot of the functionality is actually uh, most of it. Like I wrote most of it, so I do actually have to fix all of that as well. So most of the bugs are actually directed directly to me. So. <laughs> oh, I see. So I'm keeping you away from fixing the bugs that we're all finding. No, 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 it's, it's okay. Today is kind of my uh, respond to everyone online day, so it's all good. <laughs> well, that's, as I'm glad you're responding to me. I actually have had a, a <laughs> bunch of playtime on it already. I'm quite enjoying it, and, and yeah, I guess you're a small team. It's uh, very cheap, um, surprisingly. I guess that's because it's a small team, right? Was that the original? It is, yes. It is, it is. Um, and we also we wanted to like uh, have it cheap so it's more accessible to people. Um, so we are hoping it is, you know, it becomes very popular because we would like to keep developing this concept further. Um, so I guess you know time will tell, of course. But uh, at this point, we're actually quite happy with uh, how things are going. So uh, which is really good news for us uh, because you know because I love science and I'm really happy that people love science and as I well. Love science so too. it'd be really nice to keep developing it. <laughs> yes. Uh, are you? Planning on educational release? Are you planning and even approaching educational markets? Uh, well, actually, at this point, um, uh, like we have, we did actually have a couple of NASA guys stop by at a uh, ED3. We did invite them, um, and it was actually really interesting to get to talk to them about it. Unfortunately, we didn't have all that much time to talk um, because you know the E3 uh, E3 yeah. time schedules are quite quite uh, packed. Um, but uh, but it was really interesting getting their feedback on it. Um, so I was really happy that I got the uh, Sky Queen oh, sequence right. right. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so we did. We did. Um, th obviously, you know, NASA cannot support a p commercial project uh, because it is a government organization. However, we have we are getting uh, so emails every now and then from um, actual educational institutions where I, which are inter interested in actually using it as a simulation base. So uh, that will be interesting to see uh, whether that'll actually get anywhere, or we'll see how that goes. Essentially. Yeah, that's great. I, I mean, I I think if you're if it's anything like the mail I'll get, you'll get people sending you scientific corrections and suggestions all the time. Yeah, I, I noticed I actually made a mistake and I uh, got, got it mixed up with Beagle 2 and uh, the Mars Polar Lander. <laughs> oh, right, yes. Well, they both had the... We don't know what happened to Beagle 2, but we know probably yeah. <laughs> Mars Polar Lander um, had a landing... Uh, yeah, I, I actually, I read the post-mortem for that thing. Uh, it was, yeah, it was really... Uh, I, I always... A nasty little yeah, thing there. I always find these <laughs> postmortems utterly fascinating because it's always typically a chain of events, and if any one of the chain was, you know, didn't happen, then the failure wouldn't happen, right? Yeah, basically, yeah.
Like th there, it was literally um, it was the burn happened too early. Um, uh, to, uh, the burn uh, from uh, from memory, yeah. I don't want to lie, but uh, from memory, the burn actually occurred for yeah, too, too long, long. Um, because it was the they technique. Converted it's, their it's, burn. Uh, it's speed incorrectly, yeah. So it actually missed Mars, I think, or it just uh, they, burnt up in the atmosphere. Yeah, they had a burn delivered to them in feet per second, and the navigation they actually yeah. the navigation team delivered the burn in feet per second, and the operations team did it in meters per second. So they burned three times longer and burned up in the yeah. atmosphere that was a or, or that was no yeah. sorry that was mars climate orbiter oh dear i'm getting all confused myself yeah i'm i'm, I'm uh, yeah the the the, the uh, <laughs> the names of them are quite similar i guess that's what's really always throwing me off mars, except for <laughs> viking yes uh, Yes, it, that, that's why when you got Mars Exploration Rovers, it's divided into spirit and opportunity. It's brilliant. Yes, and then uh, now we have Curiosity. Nice and memorable. <laughs> and yes. in a couple of years, we're going to have another even more amazing one. They're getting bigger and bigger and better and better. Bigger wheels. <laughs> bigger wheels, yes. And hopefully... It was actually really um, really interesting with the Rovers when, we, when, uh, when I was implementing them in like, Take on Mars. Uh, we actually do did implement something very very similar to the rocker bogey system which the rovers use um but like from the campaign side we actually increased the speed to threefold um that is simply so people don't have to you know sit there for ages but like we are planning to actually have that that it's we're actually, that, that's the reason why we're doing it on the campaign side so that the rovers do have a realistic speed uh afterwards when difficulty is implemented where you know you'll have let's say i want to be absolutely realistic so i'll put it into the highest difficulty setting and there you'll be going once one time speed so wow. that'll be interesting there I guess the other thing on that front I was going to ask was, have you got any plans to make the actual operations more realistic where you send up a series of motions but you don't see what happens, then you hit the button to send it and then you get a response back? Well, uh, actually, uh, what I can what I can say is in the upcoming update, which should be within two weeks, like a major update. Well, like we do have a development build just just for information, which we will be um, actually building almost daily. So, uh, so folks that will uh, actually be using that version will see uh, changes effectively daily. Um, but obviously, for the uh, the you know the major updates, we will be um, like of the main release build. Uh, there we will be providing a change log, of course. Um, but in the upcoming one, we do plan to enable the uh, Gravon console, which was in the uh, main uh, oh, yeah. uh, main uh, mission control room. Just a little bit of an Easter egg, really. But it is actually quite an interesting. It's a, it is a full blown game there, so that is a that is quite interesting. Um, but we are planning to obviously um, improve the tutorials there. Um, and then, then also with the landing sequence, you know, provide a bit more information there. The landing, there's actually the incorrect HUD there. There should be actually landing HUD there, where you can only control the uh, the landing itself. Oh, I see. And you will be able to control it manually. Um, that'll obviously be only in the uh, in uh, if you do not choose, you know, uh, the one-way light time delay. At the moment, that that is actually a default set to zero, um, because obviously we'd ha it's not implemented yet. So, you know, but it will. Act there are plans to actually implement that progressively. So. So yeah, in the future we do envision it that uh, basically when you play the game, if you choose the hardest difficulty, you will send a uh, you know a series of commands exactly like NASA does. You know, yeah. forward 100 meters. Obviously, you know, we want to put put support for feet as well, just to uh, just to support our American folk as well. Um, and uh, you know, you'll be able to put all these uh, the data in. You know, pl plan it carefully ahead, send it, and watch as it falls off a cliff or uh, yes. or actually or actually works, <laughs> ideally. <laughs> Yeah, it, I mean, this is a this is the great thing that people forget is there's these really really long time lags, and yeah, <laughs> I guess the people in the game are also spoiled right now because you can send a probe instantly to Mars rather than waiting two years for a yeah. window and then eight months for it yeah. to get there. <laughs> not to mention, exactly. not to mention the three years of design and and funding and everything else. <laughs> yeah, one one joke that was actually like uh, going around the. Uh, the room here before was, uh, you know, that like that we should put a pre-order, like uh, you know, like if we were developing it for a year and a half, that we should put a pre-order then and say, you know, send your rover to Mars now and wait, you know, <laughs> till the release to have it arrive. But yeah, obviously that's uh, not exactly ideal for the game. So <laughs> oh, that that would be great. <laughs> I have to say that that is genius. But like the the the, the plan is to actually have it. Um, have it actually simulate everything. Um, so, like the idea behind the game, the original concept was that you would uh, send a series of commands, say, be able to save the game, 
quit it, um, you know, return in the afternoon and uh, watch as it actually performs all of the things. Like, it just you get an update and you get an update of, like, I don't know, individual photos from as it performs the end of each sequence. So you would actually get, like, literally when you come back in the afternoon, it would have already simulated everything. Uh, and you just get, like, the, 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 you know, photos from what it actually did during the uh, during that sequence, so you know you get the uh, the photo as it crashes into a rock or something. That'd be cool. Uh, but uh, <laughs> yeah, well, so that need... is. Oh, I was sorry. Say, what you need is a little uh, web browser where it can take a photo. Uh, you know, so you can <laughs> connect to it with your phone and then send very simple signals wherever you are. So you can always that be playing be, it. That would be really really good. Um, the only problem is, is obviously it would have to be running on a server at that point. Right. Um, the idea what we had was that it would be able to function completely locally, where it would actually simulate everything either ahead or at that point. Um, what would be really awesome is uh, if it, you know, if it simulated locally, for example, uh, everything. Uh, as soon as you, you know, like said, save game, and you want to quit it. It would simulate everything it needs to, um, and then upload the data to a server, and you could at any time in the day, or like it would automatically send you emails, for example, that it's completed this signal, uh, this uh, instruction, or you know. But those are just ideas, obviously. Um, you know, <laughs> technically they're quite quite difficult. Yes, th- there's great ideas. And actually, given that there's all these good ideas, it does support some level of modding, or...? Uh, yes, it does. Actually, uh, the level of modding is actually quite ridiculous. It's uh, extremely uncharacteristic of any game uh, of this size, to be honest, um, because uh, you can actually essentially throw out the whole game and make a total conversion if you wanted to. Oh. Uh, so uh, the game is completely written in script. Um, so that is an interesting thing for people, I guess. It is packed, obviously, but there is an unpacker, a community unpacker. But we will be releasing uh, the complete editing suite within uh, about two weeks. So uh, so people will be able to create their own locations, their own um, vehicles, uh, and everything. So uh, in fact, all the vehicles, that the way they actually work is they... Um, you can actually define in their configs to call individual scripts, which are compiled as soon as the vehicle is, uh, you know, spawned or created. So you can actually, uh, you know, create a vehicle, um, alt tab, change it, uh, you know, even the config, make it heavier or put an extra extra wheel in it. Alt tab back into the game, spawn it, and you have the old version and the new version next to each other, wow. which is extremely useful for debugging. Um, and that's uh, without that, it would have taken much longer to debug. I can because imagine because I remember the issues I had with with some things. I was, uh, yeah, well, well, getting so- a little angry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so an important question is, based on this, how long would you bet before we get zombies in this game? What is the time to zombie? Well, uh, <laughs> that is an Not from you, obviously. good question. Um, well, I guess it really depends. Uh, like, I, am, I myself am really interested in seeing people being added to the game. Um, obviously... On an official level, I'm not sure when or if that will be possible. I don't want to promise anything. Right. Uh, on a personal level, however, as a modification, that is something definitely I want to look into <laughs> um, because just be, just I don't know. Like uh, I don't know if you've seen the uh, the uh, GameSpot footage that was before uh, that was from uh, E3. I, I saw that. Yeah. We actually had a we had a buggy there with a machine gun. So uh, <laughs> so they can shoot <laughs> at the rocks for show. analytical purposes, right? For, it, 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 exactly. Just just to determine you know uh, whether the rock is really made of uh, rock, you know. Yeah. For example, <laughs> ballistic cratering tests. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Ballistics testing. Um, well, actually, one of the funny thing was uh, funny things w- uh, was that um, because you can actually script anything, and you can um, you know you can actually you're, you're using the editor, you can just make little script modules in locations. Uh, just for fun, I actually put a nuclear explosion there, which destroyed every rover around. Uh, obviously, extremely impractical, but it was really nice to see. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I guess that might be uh, you know things people play around with once they actually get into the editing yeah um, but definitely we are planning on uh, putting like putting up tutorials on the editing itself uh, so you know that'll obviously be within the coming weeks um, that's great you know the most like we are really concentrating on uh, you know improving uh, you know the user experience in the actual game uh, so there are I've noticed some issues along with the you know, especially with the uh, the APXS on the uh, small rover right, it's on the so, back uh, that, that's yeah. one of, yeah yeah I like, it is on the back out. that's actually realistic um, but the problem is it's not uh, it's too too sensitive so that that will just will essentially with that we'll be tweaking that we'll be concentrating on uh, mostly feedback we get from the players so that's why we actually chose to do it early access um, so that we can actually get feedback from the players and realistically implement it and they get to see the uh, you know the difference and they essentially take part in the development process yeah i mean the the problem you're specifically provided was that when you get to the third mission if you just launch the spacecraft you have the camera in the back and the sensor on the front and yeah. people learned to drive it in reverse but they didn't then realize that the sensor they had yeah, to, to exactly. go into rocks yeah 
like uh, there is one thing I want to introduce to uh, help people with that, um, and that is basically just an indicator on the HUD uh, to indicate like the current instrument you have selected where it is on the rover that would really really help i think yeah so that is one thing that we are really hoping to get implemented in the within the coming release but uh like the uh the update sorry um but yeah we'll see how that goes yeah. i'll just yeah i mean the game is looking fantastic right now i'm, <laughs> I'm really you know i'm i'm loving the immersion the music's pretty neat i you know it's a it it wins lots of points on that front obviously bugs but it is an early release and that is marvelous so i i think um i guess you know i'm just curious what games you you play incidentally other than this well uh, i play i play like uh my uh, gaming spectrum is actually quite vast um like for example here we occasionally in the afternoon when you know it's a friday afternoon um you know let's say about five six o'clock when we're all ready to go home we actually let's say play chivalry medieval warfare just for fun oh. just to kill each other a little bit um, <laughs> um but otherwise i really really love and have played for a very long time orbiter um which i'm sure you know about um i know about yes. yeah it's absolutely awesome i love that simulator um i guess one of the most rewarding things is that is in, in that in that simulator i guess uh is getting the getting it to the moon correctly um in the realistic um in a realistic the, the apollo extension yeah right? yeah exactly that is really really rewarding um at the same time obviously if you just crash land onto earth it's it's also rewarding seeing it smash and you know that it's just hopeless <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but otherwise i also uh had a real interest in celestia um, and of course, Kerbal Space Program. That that's just okay. an excellent game. Which, <laughs> yes, which is the reason I found out about this. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I think uh, I'm just glad to hear that. And um, yeah, I don't know. Thanks very much. I guess we'll wind this up. Well, thank thanks. you. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, um, if if uh, obviously you know we, we can um, do you know these kinds of videos in the future as well. I'm sure, like you know, that uh, they'll as the coming updates, you know, as as the coming updates you know progress, whatever, um, that there'll be more and more to talk about. So. Definitely uh, more features. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, thanks very much. Have a great thanks. day. You too. I'm Scott. You're Martin. Yes. <laughs> fly, fly safe. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>